Good morning. I'm Joy Morgan, the pastor at Heflin First United Methodist Church, and we are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us online this morning. We hope that you'll participate with us in our ministries online throughout the week. We have a, a women's Bible study that began a couple of Thursdays ago, but it's not too late to join us by Zoom each week, and we can send you that information if you'll just let us know that you're interested. Our youth also meet each week, and we have some different children's activities as well. If you're interested in a men's study, I'd love to hear from you. We would like to get that started, and, um, and we also want to know about any pastoral care needs that you might have or any prayer concerns. You you can send those to me by text or by calling me on my cell phone at 256-393-0809. And we hope that you will continue to pray for the church and support the church through your giving. Um, also, this morning I have a special, special message for our church council. We are going to begin our discussion about what it will look like when we do get back together in person and the preparations that we need to make. And so we will be having a church council meeting this Wednesday night by Zoom. You can call in or join us through the Zoom app on your phone or any other smart device or computer. And so um, please check your email so that you can read through the guidelines that the bishop and cabinet have sent us that we'll be using for our discussion. And also so you can watch a short video by Dr. Lamb, who is also a part of our conference, the North Alabama Conference, giving us some information to consider as we meet together. So again, that will be Wednesday for the church council at six o'clock this week. Again, we're so glad that every one of you has chosen to worship with us this morning. So let's stand and sing page 103. Let's sing all of it this morning, all four verses. And we're going to do this. Let us pray. O oh God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives, and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit, that we may know the joy you give for your people. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as our own, as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I miss you a lot. I miss getting to see your sweet faces on Sundays at church. But um, I came over to my friend Miss Misty's house to do this because there's a lot of building going on at my house and a lot of noise going on at my house. And we made, we built a deck and Michael's building some other stuff to go on the deck. But when I was watching them build a deck, it made me think of, like I was very interested in how they were doing this and it made me think of our lives and all of that. But when they were building the deck, they dug these big holes and they put these big posts, they were about that big, in there. And then they put concrete around them to make a really solid foundation for my deck so that it would not fall. And that made me start thinking about our life and how we need to have a really solid foundation in our life. And that made me think of a story in Matthew. And it is a story that comes from Matthew, um, uh, Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his, built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. So I started thinking about that story and our lives and the foundation like in my deck. And I was wondering who the rock was. Is the rock the concrete? Is the rock a real rock? Or who is the rock? So then I started thinking about a song that I heard when I was growing up in the church. And it said, in the chorus it said, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So that made me think, well maybe Christ is the rock. Maybe Christ is the foundation that we should be building our lives around and on. So then I started thinking, wow, that's really what it is. It is Christ. So you need to make sure that your life is rooted in Christ and around. We live our lives the way that Christ would want us to live it so that we would lead others to him. So just like my deck and that foundation in my deck, Going to church helps us um, build that foundation in Christ. Prayer helps us build that foundation in Christ. Reading our Bibles with our parents and having little devotionals and coming on Wednesday nights and going to Sunday school. All of that helps us with our foundation in Christ. So let's remember that and remember to stand on the Christ the solid rock. Because all other ground is sinking sand. I miss you guys and I hope to see you soon. Let us pray. Oh God, please help each one of us have our lives built upon your rock, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Help us to live lives that lead others to you. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning again comes from Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 3. We are looking more this week at spiritual gifts and seeking to discern the gifts that God has given to each one of us. Again, this is Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There are many gifts that can be purchased in our local shops. There are others that can arrive in Amazon boxes at our doorstep. There are even more that can be handmade with paint and paste and clay. There are gifts that can be wrapped in paper and ribbons and bows, but there are also gifts that are awkward to wrap, that, uh, that, that symbolize what you're actually giving to someone for Christmas or an anniversary or a birthday. I don't know about you, but our family has had several events or occasions that gifts would be given since we have been in this time of social distancing. We've had at least three birthdays, and Neil and I are about to celebrate our anniversary this week, and normally we might take wrapping paper like this and maybe some ribbon like this, and we would wrap up a gift to give to our family members to give to one another. Um, but our time has been so different. We've not always been together to celebrate these events. We've had Zoom calls to celebrate together in that way. And so um, it made me think even more about the gifts we sometimes give that are not wrapped up, that you can't put into a box. And some of these gifts are experiences. Sometimes they are the gift of a visit together, a trip, a membership to museums, lessons to learn a language or an instrument, a sport or an artistic skill. There is the gift that people in our lives can give us to help us love something. Parents, mentors, siblings, teachers, and friends can help to foster within us a love for being in nature or a love for reading and books, a love for music, and hopefully a love for God. What do you wrap, though? When you give this kind of gift, when you receive this kind of gift, what gets wrapped? Do you write a card that just says what the gift is, or a riddle to decipher for the one who unwraps the gift to figure out what the actual gift is, um, or a book that tells about what the gift is going to be, or a picture to illustrate the experience that you hope to share? As I thought about these gifts that we can't quite wrap in a box, Spiritual gifts, I think, are very similar. They don't come elaborately packaged with a Hallmark card and Charleston wrap and raffia ribbons. God gives us instead a passion and a love for something and a spiritual lifetime to experience this gift, to develop it, and then to share it with others. But first, our, um, our conference mission statement, I think, has the right order when it says discover, develop, and deploy. So we, we might want to jump into being deployed for God, but first we have to discover and to develop our gifts. So this morning we're going to get back to that time of discovery and, and focus on a few spiritual gifts that we find in Scripture. The first this morning is the spiritual gift of prophecy. Prophecy is the special God-given ability to courageously declare truth, God's truth. 
into circumstances of confusion or resistance. People sometimes think of the word prophecy as predicting the future, but more often in the Bible it is seen as forth telling or telling forth the truth of God. You might think about Isaiah calling um, the people to justice, or John the Baptist calling people to repentance, or perhaps if you're in our women's study, you might be thinking about Deborah that we studied this past week, um, or from more recent history, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you have this gift of prophecy, you might find yourself gripped and sometimes burdened by a very sharp sense of right and wrong. Injustice makes you unable to stay silent. It, it's like you cannot stand it. You may not be a, a warm and fuzzy person, but declaring the truth matters more to you than being liked. You stand up to bullies. You speak up for those without a voice. Prophets are the conscience of the body of Christ, and your gift is essential for us to stay in line with God's heart, but it often comes at a cost. Now, this week as the women studied together, we shared that sometimes you might have a friend who has this gift, and we all need that friend who is a prophet, and they might speak truth, and at first you might not want to hear it. It might upset you or offend you, but then as you continue to pray on that truth that they have spoken, you realize that it's spoken in love, and you become thankful. But often Christians avoid prophets, or they even shame them, rather than considering what it is they say. If this is your gift, it is hard work to be a prophet, but you don't get to choose your gift, only whether or not you will be obedient in using it. Now, the second spiritual gift this morning is the spiritual gift of mercy. If you have the gift of mercy, you may be impacted by the words of those who have the gift of prophecy. Mercy is the special ability to empathize with the pain in others so that you are moved to take action. Now, many good people and followers of Christ might feel moved when they hear of a need, and many of you work to fill needs regularly. Um, but the spiritual gift of mercy, it takes the next step. You don't just do something or give some, but you go beyond meeting the needs of someone um, to give of yourself. In, in Jesus' story about the Good Samaritan, there's a man who is, he's beaten, he's left for dead on the side of the road, and other religious people, they walk right past him, but the Good Samaritan can't. His gift of mercy is not tied up in who he is or how much he has or what he can offer physically, although he does meet the physical needs, but he offers himself. He feels compassion. He stops. He, he, he gives. He heals. He binds up and he takes care. He doesn't just do something. He does everything he can. He is unafraid for himself. He does not avoid touch, touching this injured, unclean man, but he acts in mercy. If you have this gift, when you sit next to someone who's in a hospital bed, when you are present with a grieving family member, when you're talking to someone and they've gone through a difficult loss, you will find God at work in you to say words or you'll know when to be silent, when to give a touch or a hug, or when to refrain from that. And in each of these merciful responses, you are in tune with the Holy Spirit. And you may not even fully understand how you know what is needed. In these situations, others might feel awkward, but you have a gift where God lets you know how to pour out care and comfort. This is the gift of mercy. Again, part of why you have to find and to use your spiritual gift is because when you do, God is at work in you in ways that we could not otherwise understand. And your own faith and the faith of others around you is built up in your use of your spiritual gifts. Now, the next spiritual gift this morning is the spiritual gift of knowledge. Knowledge is the special ability to discover, explore, and clarify information truth that will build up the body of Christ and other people. If this is you, then you may be like the Apostle Paul. You love 
to learn. Paul was a well-educated Roman citizen who could read and write in Greek. He knew scripture and he studied under Gamaliel, who was one of the most renowned rabbis of history. He became of the elite of elite, a, pro a Pharisee. Um, he loved to learn and to know and he continued this after his conversion. After he heard the voice of Christ on the Damascus Road, he spent what in Scripture appears to be a quiet time of seven to eight years, and, and we, we think that he must have been preparing to be an apostle of Christ. Now, if you have the gift of knowledge, you too crave to figure things out. You'll be motivated or even prompted to spend times in the Spirit knowing where to look for information and continuing to learn and to study. God will give you the gift of being able to figure things out, to analyze things, to put things back on the right track, even when others around you might be confused or disoriented. This is the gift of knowledge. Now, finally this morning, the last gift I'd like to share is the spiritual gift of faith. This is, it's, um, it's interesting to watch in people's lives. Um, it's a special ability to have a vision and to have a confidence in God's plans and direction for the future. You might know the story of the three young men in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Neil shared that story with our children online um, on Facebook on Friday evening. Um, and they said to the king, our God is able to deliver us even there in the furnace, but even if he does not deliver us, we're holding on to him no matter what. If you have the gift, the spiritual gift of faith, you have a capacity to continue to trust God when other people might just quit. Uh, when God gives you an idea or a dream about a future ministry, it's like you can already see it. When obstacles come, instead of it defeating you, um, it energizes you or it gives you a calm and a peace that you cannot explain. You have the gift of faith. And if you do, when you see a mountain and you tell it to move in Jesus' name, you really do expect it to move. When some people might say, I have to see it to believe it, a person with this gift says, if I believe it, I know I'm going to see God make it happen. Um, that is the gift of faith. Now, we are all called to have faith, but some of you have a special gift for confidence in how God will work in the future. Now, finally, I'd like to say, please don't forget. Don't forget to call a friend, a neighbor, a family member, or a Sunday school classmate if you heard his or her gift mentioned this morning. Let him or her know how you see God at work in him or her, um, it, it's very powerful to hear how others see God at work in us, and it can um, give us a fresh sense of calling to be about God's work. So please be sure to call, um, call your friends, call your neighbors, call your classmates. Together, we will continue to discover the, the gifts the Spirit has placed in our lives, and together we can better be about the work of being Christ's body in the world. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for choosing to use us as a part of your work in this world. Thank you for the blessing of being a part of your body. Open our eyes, ears, and heart to discover how you invite us into your work and how you gift us for ministry together. Thank you for your call, your empowering gifts, and your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
school in your heart to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Amen.